Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour. What a glorious time to be alive. A challenging time that you have told us you're going to do something mighty through all your people. Confirm it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray your power will go with your people. The anointing will go with your people. Everywhere we go, we mention the name of Jesus, the enemy will bow. They will flee from us in Jesus' name. And Lord, those enemies are no more walking above us. They are walking on our feet. And because of that, every place the soul of our foot shall tread upon. You have given to every one of us. We claim that inheritance in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, all these great stories we're hearing, wonderful stories we're hearing, you multiply that and put it in every mouth. The will be church grows in every location. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless everyone. Please be seated. We're looking at a godly ministry in a nation of crisis. A godly ministry in a nation of crisis. We're looking at Mark. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 7. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take ye heed to yourself, for they shall deliver you up to, be, to the council. And in the synagogue ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, and for a testimony against them. And yet it says in verse 10, the gospel and the gospel must first be published among all nations. It's telling us that even though we may be, you may be in a nation of crisis, you are hearing about this crisis there, and this challenge there, and this difficulty there, and it makes you have to wonder. And the Lord is saying, even in the midst of those challenges, it says that this gospel must be first published among all nations a godly ministry in a nation of crisis we're looking at three points number one prophetic revelation on nations in crisis prophetic revelation on nations in crisis number two priestly responsibility during national crisis priestly responsibility during national crisis number three persevering reapers in nations experiencing crisis persevering reapers in nations experiencing crisis number one what's number one again prophetic revelation on nations in crisis in second chronicles chapter 15 second chronicles chapter 15 already we have seen in an earlier message as well as even in the passage i read now in mark chapter 13 that crisis will come to different nations and to different communities and even though those crises may be there yet the lord is telling us it's not something surprising something that believers of the church that were to worry about because it says it's been revealed already there's prophetic revelation and when there are such crises what actually happens how do we know that this is what the lord is talking about in second chronicles chapter 15 reading from verse 3 now for a long season Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him he was found of them and in those days there was no peace to him that went out and to him that came in 
That's a crisis some nations go through, some communities go through, even some states in a nation, some local governments in a nation, a peculiarity in that place at such a time. And the Lord is saying, when that happens, understand, it's been predicted before, it's been prophesied before, so it doesn't come to you as a shock, as something. How could this happen? The Lord said, it will happen. No peace to the people going out, no peace to the people coming in. And we don't need to give all the details. You know the details in the community you are coming from you know the details in the areas you are coming from to go out is difficult and to come in is difficult at a particular hour of the day anybody going out is going out at the risk of his life and that's what he's saying here about all that has been predicted that it will happen and so when it happens that doesn't mean there's no godliness anymore no godly ministry anymore no godly ministers anymore that everybody will check out everybody will flee away and run no you will not run you will stay Stay there. I said you will stay there. If good people run away when bad things are happening, who are going to change the bad things to become good? Think about that. If good people, if godly people run away when bad things are happening in a community, who are the people that will change those bad things and those evil things and those ungodly things that are taking place? That's why it says you stay there and pray because the key is in your hand already. It tells us in that verse, in that verse 5, it says, but great vexation. Or great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country and nation was destroyed of nation and city of city that's the predicted thing that will happen in the last days it happened before for God did vex them with all adversity adversity is multiplying but then it says hey, look at this now it says be ye strong therefore and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded your work will be rewarded in Jesus name and because of that at that time now that uh, this man saw that this is a predicted thing it was prophesied it was going to happen and now we have the evidence and we have the reality in our means because of that he knew it is not the time to run away it's the time to be there and remain stable and the work of the Lord will prosper in your hand look at verse 12 in verse 12 and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Now we understand that God will be with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And so when a nation, when a community, when a country, when a local government gets into trouble, the preachers, the evangelists, the intercessors, the prayer warriors, they will not run away from that place. There must be a godly ministry in that place when all those things, confusing things are happening. And so we come to a covenant. I think we'll come to a covenant today. I said we can come to a covenant today that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And when troublemakers arise, when rioters arise, when they arise, and when hooligans arise, and when the people that are bad people, wicked people, sinful people, when they arise and they want to take over the land that belongs to the Lord and the people of God, the people of God will not run away and then leave our property and leave our churches and leave the congregations in the hands of bad people. We're not going to do that. I said we're not going to do that. Let me ask you a question. You're married. You, know, you have a good wife, beautiful wife, and this loving wife, and then trouble arises in that place. Will you leave your wife there and then run away? And say, I need to escape for my life. Therefore, I'm running away. Anybody will do that here? Okay, if I find anybody, we're going to take them to the pair warriors. It needs deliverance. We're not going to do that in Jesus' name. But the bride of Christ, the wife of Christ is there in that location. The church is the bride of Christ. And you are the pastor. And you are the leader there. And you are the shepherd there. And while the bride of Christ is there, his wife, his beloved wife, he purchased that wife that bride with his precious blood and then there is trouble in that place you abandon the bride of Christ there the church there and then you run away if your wife were there 
You will not abandon your wife there and run away. But now you abandon the wife of Christ, the bride of Christ, and then you run away. It will not be that again. You will stay with the bride of Christ. We are there together. And the Lord will protect his bride. And he will protect the one watching over his bride. It's not a time to run away. It's a time to come to a covenant and say, at this time of crisis, at this time of trauma, trouble, for the people of God, we are here together together when the people the members of the church when they see their pastor that the pastor is there and he says and they are even advising pastor we will manage ourselves why don't you go say no i'm not going i want to stay with you it will encourage them and then you can come together and you can stop that riot you can stop that evil thing by your prayer because the key is in your hand i said the key is in your hand now you think about it another way if the person that has the key to lock the door against evil he runs away with the key and the door is open and everybody is making trouble and we're saying where's the man that has the key to lock the door against all this trouble the one that has the key he has run away and the Lord says I give unto the keys of the kingdom the kingdom of heaven and he says whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven where the keys in your hand you have gone and when you have gone who is going to lock the door against evil we are the people to lock the door against the evil in this land we're not going to run away for the troublemakers if anybody is going to run who is going to run resist the devil and he will flee from you no evil thing will touch your church no evil thing will touch your location the key is in your hand. Use that key. You are going to overcome in Jesus' name. There's revelation, prophetic revelation that nations are going to be in crisis. Let's look at chapter 21 of Luke. Luke chapter 21. I'm reading there from verse 25. Luke chapter 21. And we're reading from verse 25. It says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations and nations in crisis and then it says we're perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking at those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaking and that's what we're talking about look at it from verse 9 now that same period of time it tells us from verse 9 it says when ye shall hear of wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not by and by then shall he and then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven but before all these they shall, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and into prison being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake and it shall turn to you for a testimony praise the lord it will give you more beautiful stories to tell and you'll be able to tell how god delivered you how you saw the angel and the angel came and brought you out of that place and put the word in your mouth again and say go go back into that same temple and go and declare everything that you have learned it tells us in verse 14 certainly therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what he shall answer for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to give say or receive it has happened already i say it has happened already number two priestly responsibility during national crisis priestly responsibilities during national crisis as you are writing that down can i ask you a question you know when there is a crisis in any land anywhere you'll find that the people were called the red cross the red cross that were not there before what do they do 
they come in there they come in there and when there is crisis and epi epidemic breaking out doctors that were in the land before do the doctors run out of town what should they do they stay because if we needed doctors anytime we need the doctors normally ordinary times peaceful times when there's no problem but when the problems are there and then you have this one has been you know injured that one has been injured that one has been injured that's the time we need the doctors more and the doctors are not going to run away and the red cross people they're not going to run, run away and the peacekeepers that's how we need them and if the keep peacekeepers were there in that country before now this is erupting and breaking out the peacekeepers are not going to run away we need the peacekeepers at the time when the trouble erupts and breaks out well if we need the red cross people and they don't run away and we need the doctors and they don't run away and then we need the peacekeepers and they don't run away how about the people that are bringing peace to the land how about the people that are the peacemakers how about the children of god and now about the preachers of the gospel that will show them the way of peace how you see that doctors are not running away we are the people to run away and then red cross people are not running away. we are the people to run away and then the peacekeepers are not running away and it's the preacher the missionaries and the evangelists and the pastors and the prayer warriors and the ministers that are running away the priests of the Lord running away it will not be so again I said it will not be so again because the Lord has given us the peace and the solution to the problems of the people we will stay with them in Jesus name let's look at numbers chapter 16 numbers chapter 16 and you'll see that when anything like trouble or plague or sickness erupts the priests will have to stay there because it's the priests that will actually bring the healing and the solution to the problem in numbers chapter 16 verse 44 numbers chapter 16 or in from verse 44 it says and the lord spake unto moses saying get you all from among this congregation that i may consume them as in a moment and they fell on their faces and moses said unto aaron that's the high priest we need the priest at this time when judgment is coming the wrath of god is coming destruction is coming and people are being destroyed and they're going to die and if we don't do anything if we run away from them they are forever lost it says and moses said unto aaron take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them and for they for there is wrath gone out from the lord and the plague is begun and aaron took as moses commanded and uh, what's the next word what's the next word tell me out loud now, do, do you remember that uh, Aaron, Aaron and Moses, who is older? Aaron, by how many years? By three years. And when God called uh, Moses, he was 80. And what was Aaron at that time? 83. And now they've gone beyond 83, gone beyond 90. It's already going already now, even more than 100. And we're told, and he took the censer and he ran. He ran, is it, away from the congregation? tell me tell me again tell me out loud he ran into the midst of the congregation because of the devastation destruction coming upon them already he ran old man more than 100 years of age at this time because he was a high priest and the people the plague had begun and at that time the plague had begun it's not the time to shield ourselves it's not the time to run away it's the time to run into the congregation and then he tells us there and the congregation and then and behold the plague was begun among the people and he put on incense and made an atonement for the people and he stood between the dead and the 
living. That's the ministry of the priest. That's the ministry of the child of God. That's the ministry of the missionary, the pastor, the shepherd, the overseer. He stood be between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. Now, and the plague was stayed. I pray that we'll do our duty in Jesus' name. We are the priest. Look at First Peter, First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 5 and verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 5 ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood we are the priests we are the priests and when there's trouble anywhere a crisis anywhere a war anywhere that's not the time for us to abandon the bride of christ the church of the living god and then run away it says in that verse 5 and we're to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ look at verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood we are the priests of the lord you are a priest I said you're a priest. Say I'm a priest. We need you. We need you. When the nation is in crisis, we need you. Prayer warrior, we need you. Evangelist, we need you. Pastor, we need you. The priest of the Lord, we need you. It says, but ye are a royal, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And let's come to um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. I want you to notice something here. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 1. Priestly responsibility during national crisis. Acts chapter 14. Look at it from verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so speak so speak so speak that a great multitude both of the jews and also of the greeks believed verse 2 but the unbelieving jews stirred up the gentiles and 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 they made their minds evil affected against the brethren crisis erupted situation changed even though many people had believed the jealous people they created confusion commotion for the for the priests of the lord the apostles of the lord the preachers of the gospel it says in verse 2 unbelieving you stir them up and that brought the trouble look at uh, verse uh, 3 and give me the first one two three four words one two three four one two three four read it out long time they have because of that trouble because this is the time of trouble we would have even gone away from there to go to another place before but because of the stirring up of the people because of the crisis because the church of god will be left in danger because the believers that just came to know the lord if we check out now if we run away now they will they may perish they may backslide it says long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands it says when the crisis began even because of that crisis they abode there longer than usual longer than they would have stayed they said okay satan if you are coming you are making trouble we want to tell you we're even going to stay longer in this troublesome place that we would have stayed that's the christian attitude that's that you are a person having conviction that the protection of the lord is around us and the angels of the lord they encamp around the people of god and nothing will rise up to hurt you in jesus name we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 18 acts of the apostles chapter 18 and here we're told in uh, let's read from chapter 18 we're reading from verse 6 and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed he shook his raiment he shook him his raiment and said unto them your blood be upon your own heads i am clean for henceforth i will go unto the gentiles and he departed thence 
and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard very near to the synagogue. And Crispus, the, uh, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, be not afraid, but speak, hold not thy peace. There's trouble there, that's why the Lord said, be not afraid, and anytime there's any trouble where you are, the first thing you should remember is, be not afraid. Tell me out loud, and you remember the promise of God and the protection of the Lord and nothing evil will happen to you in Jesus name I want to ask you a question um, those of us who are here have you been in any troublesome spot in your country in the nation before I said have you been in any troublesome spot before where are you ah and you're still here and you're still at your duty post and you're still holding on and the protection of the Lord kept you until you came. That protection will never leave you. You know, when things like that happen, that is when the promises of God are precious. That's when the protection of the Lord, that's when it's real. That's when, now I know the Lord has sent his angel and has protected me. And that angel will always protect you in Jesus' name. It says uh, this in verse 10, Now for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have how many people? much people in this city and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them that's what we are to do when those things are up we're looking at uh, chapter 27 Acts chapter 27 I'm reading from verses 23 and to 25 Acts 27 verses 23 to 25 for there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord. You know, when we're in trouble, the angel of the Lord is always there. You'll always find him there in Jesus' name. There stood by me the, this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. The reason why all those people are preserved alive was because of the presence of Paul in their midst. And the Lord said, don't fear, don't fear, Paul. I'm taking you to Caesar. You'll be a witness uh, to uh, my name in Rome and before Caesar. And he's saying, even because of you, all these people around you have given them unto you. Look at verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe, God, that it shall be. Tell me. Even as it was told me. But let me show you a secret in verse 30. Look at verse 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color, under pretense, as though they would have cast anchors out of the four ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. See, the Lord had given him the promise. He said, I've given all the men unto you. None of them will lose their lives in the crisis, in the storm, over in the ocean. And yet, even though the promise had been given that all of them, they'll be saved, they land safely. Then some of the soldiers and then the shipmen, they wanted to run away. And then Paul said, yes, he gave us the promise. He'll preserve us. He gave us the promise. He'll protect us. He gave us the promise that nobody will lose his life. Then he says, but except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. That means the responsibility is there. That even though the church has the promise that he'll preserve the church and the church will be intact and the church will go from strength to strength and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. But except the pastors, the overseers, 
the leaders, the people that have the keys in their hand, except they abide in the fellowship and they remain there and they are watching over the people of God. All those promises he has given to the people of God, they cannot be fulfilled. They will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Point number three now, we're looking at persevering reapers in nations experiencing crisis. When nations are experiencing crisis, when communities are experiencing crisis, the Lord is telling us that we need to persevere, persevere right there because we're the reapers. That is, we're the harvesters, we're the people to harvest the souls into the kingdom of God. Persevering reapers and nations experiencing crisis. We're looking at John chapter, chapter 4 verse 35. John chapter 4 verse 35. Say not ye there are yet four there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth from fruit unto the life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together we shall rejoice together and herein is this saying true one soweth and no other reapeth I send you to reap whereon that whereon thou bestowed no labor all the men labored and ye are entered into their labors the Lord is saying we are the reapers and at the time when the harvest is ripe and they were reaping and preaching and bringing souls into the kingdom that is the time the reapers have to persevere so that the souls that are getting ready to be saved they will be saved they will not lose their chance of being born again and brought into the kingdom have vested into the kingdom in jesus name galatians chapter 6 galatians chapter 6 we're reading from verse 9 let us not be weary let us persevere let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not i will not faint I said I will not faint. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Persevere. It's not the time to faint. When you see all those uh, problems, persecutions, and pressures, and commotions in the land, there is the time to understand. You're not like every other person. You're not like every Dick and Harry. You're not like every, every citizen there. You have a special protection upon you. And that protection, you'll experience it in a practical way in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. I faint not. I faint not. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed. How often? Day by day. There will be renewal in your life day by day. Verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Have you noticed that these things don't last? They don't last. You know when they are there, it's like the night of affliction is almost like forever. It's like, when will this end? It will soon come to an end. So it says, for light affliction, which is but for a moment, walk it for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. We're going to have the victory. Look at Jesus Christ. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be saved, says the Lord. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. And when you are looking at Jesus and you are looking at the promises of God and you are looking at the things the Lord has given unto you, I believe that you are not going to faint. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal just short lived it will soon pass away and, but the things which are not seen are eternal Ex, uh, then acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts chapter 20 the lord is telling us to persevere stay in there remain there do the work of the lord there for the sake of the souls for the sakes of the bride of christ because of the wife of christ that is there the church of the living god stay there 
encourage them. Your presence alone will be an encouragement. And the, because you are there, the church of God will not scatter. And the people of God will not give in to discouragement. That's why the Lord is saying that we are going to have eternal reward if we just trust the Lord and we'll stay there with the people of God. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 22. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save except that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bounds and afflictions abide me. Verse 24. But none of these things move me. Can we say that together? Say that again. You know what Paul the Apostle is saying? He's saying, I'm not moved by what I hear, I am moved by what I believe. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. What I believe is God has a ministry for me here. And because he has a ministry for me here, that is the thing that motivates me and moves me. All the other things I see, they don't move me or motivate me or they don't uh, kind of manipulate me to say I'm checking out, I'm running away. You will stay there in the strength of the Lord in Jesus' name. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my cause with joy. You'll finish your cause. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you, tell me all the counsel of God. I pray that you'll be as faithful like that. Take it therefore, take it therefore, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Who has made you overseer? Who has made you pastor? Who has made you minister? was made a shepherd over those people the Holy Ghost he knew that all those troubles will come there all the crises will come he knew that and yet he made you the overseer and the pastor and the shepherd there that you are not to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood you will do it in Jesus name chapter 26 chapter 26 of Acts. Acts chapter 26 verse 19. Whereupon O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Can you say that? I said can you say that? I said can you say that? Every time will you be able to say that? Why don't you say then? Wherefore O King Agrippa I I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision what kind of vision do you have? I say, what kind of vision do you have? Heavenly vision. The Lord will carry out in your life in Jesus' name. And then as you abide there, the Lord will watch over you. And then you'll keep on walking while you're abiding there. You know, you use your telephone, you use your email, you use text, you use a lot of things. And then you call some people, they come to your house and you go to them. You go everywhere and there'll be revival even in that time of crisis in Jesus' name. The promise of God is for those who abide, not for those who flee, not for those who run away. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most, I'm not going to tell you what I'm re where I'm reading. If you are a Bible preacher, if you are a believer yourself, find it out yourself. You know, sometimes I have spoon feed you too much. I say Isaiah chapter days, and then if you don't say open, I, I say it second time and third time, and then able to you, I said this page 982. Nine, nine, you know to help you but this time now i'm not going to tell you i'm going to read it just for myself are you there yeah. he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide will he flee will he run away shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust surely everybody say surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler 
and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at no day. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou see and behold the reward of the wicked, because thou hast said, Thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, there shall no evil befall your wife. There shall no evil before your husband. There shall no evil before your family. There shall no evil before your local church. Neither shall any play come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you have known my name you will call upon the Lord and he will answer I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him I will honor him huh. there comes something now there's something here I said there's something here in the midst of the crisis when the crisis is over you'll still be alive when all those problems and commotions are over you will still be alive because waste wonderful with what is this with long life will i satisfy you and show you my salvation and show you my deliverance and the everlasting arms are supporting you go back home in the strength of the lord and the work of the lord will prosper in your hand let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer and tell the lord you'll be the godly minister in that nation of crisis you'll be the godly minister in that community of crisis you will not fail you will not fall and the power of the lord and the protection of the lord will be upon you why don't you claim that open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer and say lord i thank you Lord, I thank you. No more fear, no more anxiety, no more worry. Because I know the everlasting arms are underneath me. And the Lord is supporting me. And you are not going to fail, you are not going to fall. And the Lord will be with you ever, ever, ever with you. And the Lord is saying, with long life will I satisfy you. You will not die in the crisis. You remain alive. You are going to remain alive. Long life, long life, long life. And long time ministry as well. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Let him confirm that. Let him confirm that. Let him confirm that. Let him confirm that. Abide. Don't flee. Abide. Don't flee. Abide. Long life. Long time ministry. The Lord will watch over you.